everybody. Happy Saturday. Well, last night we loaded up the wheels on the pallet and put them in the back of the truck here so we can head over to the sand blasters this morning. Uh, that's where we're going now actually. Get these all blasted up. The drive wheels here on the pallet. The sulky wheels are up in front there. You know if you can see them or not. Uh, I got the little stand loaded up. So we can use that for sandblasting. Um, so yeah, after that we'll head up to the workshop and uh, get these set up on the stands and we'll be pretty much ready for paint then. So it's kind of an exciting weekend. I'll check back with you guys later. Right, sure we'll make quick work of it. Black magic. Did a really good job. Quite the transformation, huh? Much nicer, much cleaner. Uh, even if I gotta do a little bit more minor cleanup, it saves me oodles of time. So, I'm gonna have a little lunch here and we'll uh, go and set these up at the shop probably this afternoon. Got the hubs cleaned out and put on the stands, the sulky wheels. Really good, a little bit of final cleanup, and these will be ready for paint. Got the flu cleaning brush hooked up to the drill to clean out the insides of the hubs. Um, the drive wheels, that's worked really well. The top one's all cleaned up, so we're ready to put this one on the stand. And we'll do the bottom one, put that one on the stand. And same story, a little bit more final cleanup. And these will be pretty much ready for paint. Cruising right along. So when you're working by yourself, you got to learn to be creative. Don't have a overhead hoist or nothing here at the workshop. So, and these wheels are pretty heavy. I didn't want to try to lift them up on the stands just you know by myself. So there again, got simple creative. Put up some blocking, uh, and I could roll the wheel right up into the stand without having to really lift it at all. So, you know, there again, if you take a little time and think about what you got to get done, work smarter, not harder type of thing. Uh, okay, one more wheel. Have to show you a little shot of the grease groove inside the hub there. All cleaned out. And kind of an interesting note, there's actually a two-piece hub. So this inner casting is separate from this outer flange of the actual wheel uh, and it's got this bolt that goes through to keep it located so the opposite part where the grease cup goes in stays lined up the wheel stays lined up with the hub I'm not sure why they did it this way if it was a cost thing as far as fabrication or if they did it so the actual hub could be replaceable that way. If you wore it out, you could replace it without having to replace the whole wheel. By the way, it's kind of an interesting way to fabricate it. Okay, I got this one cleaned up, so we're ready to put this one on the stand then. Here we go. Uh, I did screw them all down too, to the stand so the bar stays put, doesn't fall off. Uh, adds a little strength to it that way too. So yeah, okay, yep, sand, a little more final cleanup on these, and they will be ready for prime and paint next weekend. So, yeah, maybe we'll work on the sand blasting cabinet now. Okay, media regulator has been attached to the blasting cabinet. I just used the second uh, electrical nut to fasten it there. Uh, I drilled two holes in the corner of the booth here for the media hose and the air hose to come up through. 
I didn't bother putting any grommets or anything in there yet. I figure this is kind of a proof proof of concept first. Make sure everything works. And if it does, then I can always spiffy it up later. But for now, we'll just make sure everything's functioning before I put too much time and effort into it. Uh, I blocked the hole in the back of the corner there where the hose originally came in. Uh, just a couple of fender washers and a carriage bolt just to plug the hole on the old grommet. Hooked up the hose and stuff to the gun. So that's ready to go there. We just got to make a baffle and then go see if we can figure out how to, to attach the uh, dust collector to the cabinet. And then we should be ready to give her a try. Okay, quick and crude baffle coming right up. Had a scrap of tin here from a, it's actually from an old stove I parted out. Saved some of the sheet metal for it for future projects just like this. I've already cut out a couple of corners for other things. Uh, it actually has part of the baffle already made up, top and one side. So I'll cut it off here, that'll be the bottom. Cut it off there and do a little bending and that'll be the other side. Done and done. There, I told you it was going to be quick and dirty. That's what it is. Nothing fancy. It's just a baffle for a sandblasting booth. Uh, no rhyme or reason why I went with this particular size. I just kind of eyeballed it, whatever seemed right to me. So that'll go in there, something like that, with a few zip screws. Once I get the dust collector hooked up first, done and done. So... We're hooking up the dust collector to the cabinet. I overcame my first little hiccup. The piece that was in the cabinet is a different size than what came with the dust collector port. So I had to swap that out. Um, so I got that mounted in there. This go here. And this goes up like this and then I gotta figure out where to put those mounting brackets mount them up and we should be about ready to go then it's kind of a simple simple system so I will get that done and show you there dust collectors all hooked up I think we're actually about ready to try it here Got the baffle zip screwed in there. Might switch them out to bolts eventually because you got a little pokey sticking out this way, but for now. Uh, let's put some sand in it and see what happens. Well, it works. Of course, I don't have any rusty parts up here to try it on, so I just took some, you know, pallet banding uh, just to experiment. It does blast. It seems like it's a little bit slow, um, but it doesn't seem like there's any issue with sand getting up to it. So I'm wondering if a lot of guys watching YouTube videos, I've found a lot of guys put a air regulator on your intake hose. To actually regulate the air down a little bit because I guess maybe too much air is a bad thing I'm not really sure so maybe I'll grab my regulator tomorrow and come up here and, and play with that see if that makes any difference because I played with adjusting the the media regulating valve Oops, show you the valve uh, and that didn't really seem to make much difference open closed or anything be in, anywhere in between but there again, I'm wondering if because the air pressure is so high, I'm using full shop line pressure here, that maybe that's... Uh, I think the whole point of that media regulator is so you can cut your air back so you're not blasting quite as much air in there, um, trying to be more efficient with it, so to speak. But it's it's working. Uh, dust collector works. Um, yeah, I... So far, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll uh, get that maybe tomorrow. If I get some time, I'll come up here, play with that air regulator, and actually bring a couple of rusty somethings up here and, and see how it does. Uh, of course, 
you know, this is the used sand that was in there too, the used media. So, yeah, it might be time to put fresh stuff in there. Might help as well. Um, yeah, pretty pretty happy with today's progress. Should be a handy little thing to have. Uh, <laughs> I can foresee many hours standing there now, <laughs> blasting cleaning parts in my future, so. <laughs> All right, catch you guys later. Well, I'm down in my basement here, cleaning up the workbench a little bit, pondering problems. So I went up to the shop and brought a few rusty parts up there to try the sandblaster cabinet out. And it works, but it doesn't work well. I'm not sure why. It seems like the biggest issue was a couple different problems. Some I expected, some I didn't. Um, start with the easy one. The one I knew that was going to be a problem was since it's such a small cabinet, a lot of the media ends up getting sucked out from the shop vac system dust collector system um, but that's I don't think there's really any good way around that it's just because it's such a small cabinet you're blasting and the outlet is you know so close to where you're blasting a lot of it just by nature even with that baffle I put in there a lot of it ends up getting sucked into there which not the end of the world like I said I kind of expected that people told me that was going to be an issue because it's a small cabinet you got a bigger cabinet, it gets to be less of an issue because you're blasting farther away from your from your dust collector port. Um, so like I said, if that was the worst of it, that wouldn't bother me too much because uh, I can empty out the bottom of that canister, dump the media back in, and away you go. Clean out the filter every once in a while. That's not the end of the world. The bigger issue I'm having is that the media doesn't seem to want to flow consistently through the tube, through you know, to the blasting gun. Um, I don't think it's a issue of it being like plugged, you know, because it, it it does work, but it's like you can almost feel it in the gun and watch it through the clear media tube, where it it. It like you get a slug of sand and then it kind of like almost blocks itself so to speak and then, you know it will get another slug of sand and it's just it's not consistent and I played with I brought up my air regulator I played with regulating down the air pressure seeing if that made any difference didn't seem to make any difference I played with that little air bleeder valve on the media regulator that I made you know, opening it, closing it, anywhere in between. That didn't really seem to make much difference either. So I'm not sure where to turn. That's why I'm a little bit frustrated here. So if anybody has some suggestions, I'm all ears. Leave a comment below. Um, I don't know if it's a matter of, like if my media tube is too long, and it's not wanting to suck up all the way through the length of that tube. I don't really think that's the issue. Um, I don't know if it's the media itself, if that would make any difference, what type of media. I don't really, there again, I don't really think that's the problem. Um, if it's just the gun itself, it's just not a high dollar gun, which I kind of know that's the case, but I still think it should work a little bit better than what it does. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, like I said, if you got any suggestions where I'm going wrong, you know, maybe I just made my whole thing, my media regulator, the wrong size, you know, all my pipe fittings and stuff, maybe that makes a big difference, you know, because I went with bigger size, you know, the, the pipe fittings and stuff, you know, maybe I should have went smaller. Maybe it's too much sand getting up in there and kind of bunching itself up for a smaller tube and smaller sand would be better. I, I When I built it, I went big thinking more is better. More volume of sand to get it up to the gun would be better, but maybe not. Maybe that's counterproductive. I don't know. 
I just walk away from it for a while. I got a few things, little things kind of blasted. I did the hubcaps and stuff for the wheels. But like I said, it wasn't working very good, so I just you gotta know when to walk away from a project when you're getting frustrated. Um, good news is I made a few phone calls earlier this weekend and I talked with um, Hermantown Radiator, Glenn there, and to see how he was coming along on my radiator. So I dropped that off back on the 4th of July when I was back home. Uh, he hasn't really done anything with it yet. He's kind of looked at it a little bit, but he hasn't gotten to that yet. We'll have to be a little bit more of a squeaky wheel there and call him a little bit more regularly here. So I'm hoping he can have it done when I go home for Christmas time to pick it up then. Wouldn't be the end of the world if it isn't, but it'd be nice to have that out here, one more thing, so I can dry fit the hood and stuff once I get the engine uh, put back on the tractor. Uh, I also talked with Norm, speaking of engines, I, I talked with Norm on Friday, and he's coming right along on, on my projects. He's got the hard part of the steering box done. Uh, I haven't really talked about that a lot yet, my, he's reproducing my whole steering box for me. I've kind of been waiting to actually get it, when you know, he's all done with it, get it back here, and then I'll kind of go through the whole process, what we had to go through to reproduce it, once I actually have it in hand so I can kind of show you. But uh, he's, he's, he's over the hump with that, so to speak. The things he has left to do on that are the easy parts. Uh, so that shouldn't be too much longer. And he'll have that done. He's got my ramped disc for my clutch machined. Uh, so he just has to make three more little pins for that. And that part of the project will be ready to pick up. We're still hoping to get down there at Christmas time when I'm back in Wisconsin. Make a run down to his place and pick that stuff up. And hopefully he'll have my engine done as well at that point, like I've said before. Uh, he's got the last thing for that order. He had to order up some new piston rings. Uh, so hopefully those will come soon and then he can get uh, continue on with that part of the project. Um, he's not there again, I haven't really gone into depth about that whole engine project because they're going to kind of wait and actually get it back and then I can show you what he did and, and kind of go through it then. Um, but in a nutshell, he's only doing the machine work and stuff that we don't have the capabilities of doing here. Um, you know, he's fitting the crankshaft and the pistons and the valves and you know, the bearings, that stuff that I can't really do myself. I don't have the capabilities for the machining part of it. So he's going to do that part of it and then I'll get it back here and then I'll finish putting everything else together on it. You know, the oil pan, the front cover, and the head, and all that kind of stuff. Because um, I can I can put things together and do that myself here. So he's just doing what I can't. Um, so that's good news. That made me happy to hear that he's coming along with that part of the project. Um, I think it's about what I know at this point. Just I figured I'd give you a little recap at the end of the weekend. This I kind of trying this out in the videos. Let me know what you think. This kind of sit down and face to face little uh, update on what's going on and a recap of what I've gotten done. Um, like I said, the wheels are, are pretty much ready to paint. I got a little bit of final cleanup to do. So over the Thanksgiving weekend I'll, I'll do any of the work there and use the paint booth there and, and hopefully get those primed and painted. Um, so the next couple weeks here will be pretty exciting. Um, maybe once I walk away from the sandblasting cabinet and think about it a while and maybe I'll come up with a solution. Sometimes you gotta let these ideas percolate a little bit think on them a little bit and come up with an answer so well I think I'll wrap it up here I think I've about covered what I have to talk about for this week I will catch you guys next weekend uh, I hope you guys everybody's doing good and I thank you for watching and a reminder to subscribe and like and comment um, catch you next week have a good weekend <laughs>